Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing today? How is everyone doing today? Hey, this is Gregory Wiles coming live to you from Houston, Texas with his inspirational morning walk. But today I can just sit in the vehicle here because I got a little bit of information to cover today and I don't want to be comfortable where I can flip between these pages. So I'll sit in the vehicle here today, but it's a beautiful day here, nice and cool. And I can get my work in after. But how are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing today? How was your weekend? It's a great Monday here, man. And man, for first time listeners, this is Gregory Walls. I just get some exercise in the morning and I just share my thoughts with you guys. Whatever I'm inspired to talk about, I will share with you guys. Just give you a nice start to the morning. Something, you know, motivational, inspirational to start your day and get you through this day. Because there's lots of challenges can coming up and you need something positive to combat all the negative stuff we can go through the day. Good morning, Jillian. Good morning. How are you today? How are you doing today? How is your day going so far? All righty. So, um, you know, I had an interesting weekend, a really nice weekend with friends and all of that kind of good stuff. It was a great weekend, man. And then one, um, one conversation that was in, in, you know, engaging. I mean, a, a friend was talking and the topic of, um, you know, generational curses came up and they said, no, I never even heard of that. But, you know, and we've been to explain and, you know, talk about certain things and he said but Gregory how you know that's just not life you know what I mean how you know that's just not life why it got to be you know something you know deeper than that and it's just not life it's just not I said okay you know what you know and I was there before and I think things are just life things happen and a lot of us are there things going on in our life and we just accept it we don't know better we don't have no more knowledge and we just ah, oh, it's life man this going on in my this run in my family this happened that happened it's just life it's just my portion and we sit back and we accept it and that's what God said the lack of knowledge my people perish for the lack of knowledge right and we don't know what's going on and we just say hey it's just life. I can accept it. You go for a job, you almost get this job, and next thing you know, last minute it falls through. You say, hey, you know what? It's just life. You get upset. You blame some other people. You're going for a loan in the bank. People say, hey, you know what? You qualify for up to $100,000 or $500,000. I don't see why. I just let the boss sign off on it, and it's done. And next thing you hear, come back. I got some bad news. Something happened last minute, and you can't get the loan, and they can't explain it because they run your credit, everything, and it's and you qualify. So what's the problem now, you know? And you're going up for a promotion. You almost got it. You got all the qualifications, the experience, the everything. And next thing you know, last minute something, somebody falls through and you get the job. And they get the job over you. You're like, what's going on? Then you're blaming other people. You're claiming his race. You're claiming this. You're claiming that, right? And these things keep happening. And you're just saying his life. Maybe I just got bad luck, you know. I know some people close to me. They great at the job. They promote people above them. And then tell them to look over the people work that they promote. Even, you know, the people who make the promotion don't understand why they promote the next person by telling you to watch over the person work because, you know, they, they need the help. And you like, why I should watch over their work and not they, me and they're my boss, right? So I can look at the little story here. When I hear these things here, this will remind me what make I do that what I'm doing and I take on this assignment because I was like that. And when I was running on, a, on the, you know, like the hamster on the wheel, the faster you run, you're on the same spot. Then I realized, you know, this is much more than just life. This is something that I don't know. And I seek to, I seek the knowledge to find out what I did not know that was keeping me running in the same spot. And, um, and that's how I come into this knowledge. And when I realized how the enemy was to trick us, would trick us and just make you a puppet. I decide I'm going to educate people as much people that want to hear and learn. I'm going to do it. That's why I take on and doing this. I'm doing this about a year and a half just on my own time because I want to take the scales off of some people's eyes like that was on my eyes. So, so I'm going to re I'm going to go out and just check this story. If I have time, I'm going to do two little ones to show people this is not just life. And this great king here realized that and he seek to know what he did not know what possibly was holding him back, right? So let's look at um let's look at this story here with King David. This is in Second Samuel twenty one, one through nine. Second Samuel twenty one, one through nine, right? And what I wanted to um tell people, these these generational curses or family curses doesn't respect your rank. 
doesn't respect who you be. It doesn't know if you care about it, if you know about it or not. It's going to run its course because it's, it's there, right? So 2 Samuel 21, 1 through 9. Let's look at this. Let's look at this, right? So there was a famine during David's reign that lasted for three years. So David asked the Lord about it. And the Lord, so David, there's this famine. David is the king. This famine going on in the land. And he know David is a man of God. He praying. He doing all the right thing. He following the laws. And it's like this famine going on year one. Okay, it's going to be over. We get everybody together. We get the whole church together. And we're going to pray. And year two, this famine still going on. And everybody praying. And we fasting. And we doing all of this. And year three, and the famine still going on. David said, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay, God. I, I know better. I know I doing all that I need to do. Why this famine is still here? So David went to God. So David asked the Lord about it. David said, no, no, no. This is something I don't know here. Because I know the God that I serve. He said, if we do this, we follow his laws. He got our back. And, and, and we should not be struggling like this. So let me ask him what I don't know. So then he asked the Lord. And the Lord said, the famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murdering the Gibeonites. Mike Benjamin, how are you doing this morning? He said, Saul and his family had, are, are guilty of murdering the Gibeonites. Now, you read this. That's why people say the Bible is this. So come, you read this. It's like he murdered the Gibeonites. So what I got to do with this famine, right? So as we're going on to 2 Samuel 21, we're going to um, 21, we're there to verse 2 now. So the king among the Gibeonites, they were not part of Israel, but were all that was left of the nation of the Amorites. The people of Israel have sworn not to kill them, but Saul in his zeal for Israel and Judah had tried to wipe them out. David asked them, what can I do for you? How can I make amends so that you will bless my people? And I'll go on to this. But this was because... And see, David had no knowledge about this. My point is, he had no knowledge about this. So when we talk about these generational family curses, something we don't have no knowledge of going on. But we are a Christian, and we're doing everything we know. We're following God's word. We're living right. We, we, we give into, and stuff still happening to us. And you're like, God, why this man next door? I know he's a wicked man. I know the things he's doing. But he's prospering more than me, and I am a Christian. And your word said that you're going to pass me in all these promises. And why is not happening in my life? And those will make people change and they're gone and do all kind of things and worship other gods. Because they think like God's not hearing me. But it's a lot of things just like this famine here going on for three years in Israel. And David had no clue why. He said he's doing, he, you know, he doing all this stuff right. But he did what a lot of us don't do. He inquired of the Lord. said, God, what is going on? What do I don't know? What is there that's putting this restriction in my life? What is going on that I don't know about that's restricting, that's causing this issue in my life? What is going on in my life that every time I go for that job and I think I almost got the job and then it slipped through my hand? What's in my life that, uh, that, that, I, uh, that I'm, I'm successful in my career? I'm a good person. I, I, you know, I got a good heart. And why not nobody want to marry me? Why they, 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 I'm, a, uh, you know, and they're leaving me and going to marry some people who doing, a, you know, who not living the life that I'm living. Why all this stuff happening to me? Why I got a good job and, and, and I still live in paycheck to paycheck. I'm making over a hundred thousand dollars and, or, 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 and I still live in paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes you get your big breakthrough and next thing you know, you don't got nothing to show for it. You get up, you get coming to some little money. And next thing you know, the fridge break down, this break down, the car break down. By the time you catch yourself, you have to spend everything out. And, and, and now you're left with nothing again. And you just come into a little inheritance. And then you're left with nothing. You're like, oh, it was a good thing I got the money in time, you know. But just like David here, he had to inquire the Lord. What is going on, Lord? What is going on? You remember um, our good friend Paul said, set not your eyes on the things that you're seeing. Right? It's the unseen thing. So so let's get back in Joshua 9, 3. I can't go through the whole thing. I did a whole teaching on this. Ooh, you can go back on YouTube and look at it. I call it a covenant made by trickery. 
Joshua had made a treaty with the Gibeonites that he was not killed them. They tricked him. They tricked him. I can't go through all of it for the sake of time. They tricked him and he made a treaty. And God said, these people, you should not, you got to kill all of them. But these people come and trick him. And he made a covenant saying he's not going to kill them. When he find out that was a trick, he tried to kill them. And the, 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 the elders in, in the community said, no, 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 Joshua, you can't do this. You make a treaty. You make a covenant with these people that you're not going to kill them. And you make it on the Lord's name. So you can't kill them now. You cannot kill them now. Right? So, so needless to say, when this happened to King David reign, this was approximately 400 years later after the treaty was made. Approximately 400 years after the treaty was made, when Joshua was tricked into that treaty, I'll tell and promise the Gideonites he's not going to kill them. And here, King Saul had killed them, and this curse come on Israel. King David was not around. He didn't know nothing about this. He ain't had a clue about this, but it still affected him. How much of that is going on in our life? Stuff that we don't know nothing about that our ancestors may do. We have no clue. But it's affecting us right now. But some people are going to say, it's just life. It's just running the family. It's okay. It's not a problem. It's just life. It's just my portion. But just like this, this famine. And not until, I can't go through everything, not until he settled with these people and these people tell him, long story short, the people tell him, since Saul killed these people in my, in my family, I need seven people from Saul's house. And anyhow, King David had to go and get these seven people from Saul's family and the people killed them and then reversed this curse that was there that David had nothing to do with. He did not. 400 years ago, Joshua dead and gone and all the people who make this original agreement was gone. But the curse was still there, affecting Israel. How much of that going on in our life today? And we sit back saying, oh, maybe it's just life. And why are these things happening to me? And we're not inquiring. Let's go to our next one quick here. Our next one quick, right? This was, this was Jericho. When Joshua put a curse in Jericho. And then this is Joshua 6.26. You see, at that time, Jericho... Um, Joshua invoked this curse. May the curse of the Lord fall on anyone who tries to rebuild the tongue of Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay the foundation. At the cost of, at the cost of his youngest son, he will set up his gates. Remember God that um, he break the walls of Jericho when he tell them march around seven times, blow the trumpet, and God give them Jericho in hand. Jericho was a wicked, wicked city. So Joshua, after the get, you know, the conquer Jericho, Joshua put a curse on Jericho. He's saying, curse is the person who can rebuild, who tried to rebuild Jericho at the cost of the firstborn son when they're trying to lay the foundation to rebuild on it. At the the, the, the firstborn son is going to die. And when they finish building it, when they try to set up the gates, the, the youngest child is going to die. That's a curse Joshua put on Jericho. Fast forward about 500 years, or practically a little over 500 years later. 1 Kings 16.34. Let's see what we'll go on here. It was during King, King Ahab reign that Ha'il, a man from Bethel, rebuilt Jericho. When he laid its foundation, it cost him the life of his oldest son. That's not what the curse Joshua put on this land about 500 years ago. And when he completed it and set up its gates, it cost him the life of his youngest son. This all happened according to the message from the Lord concerning Jericho spoken by Joshua, the son of Nun. So about 500, this man didn't know, maybe he know, and just like us saying, oh, I, I, you know, I, I don't believe in that, that can't happen to me. This is a nice piece of land. I could put on a good shopping mall here. You know what? I could, I could put some apartment buildings there. I don't care. No curses, 500 years. I, you know, maybe he know about it and he handled it like that. Or maybe he didn't know. And he just sees it's a good piece of land for a nice piece of investment. And he building his last his two children. Just imagine the doctors trying to figure out what happened. Right? And he don't know what happened. My two sons just die. Oh, it's life. But I'm trying to tell people and educate people. There is more forces that fighting against you than you may know. And if you just approach it, that it's just life. And not seek to understand these things. You can be affected by things. That could change, but you don't know. That's what God said. The lack of knowledge is my people perish for the lack of knowledge. 
My people perish for the lack of knowledge. And it's true knowledge, the just shall be delivered. So when you get this knowledge down, these things happening in your life, you could understand that they can be broken and it's not just life. And you don't have to suffer some of these things that you're going through because it could be family curses, things there that you don't know what can change. Right, guys? I did teachings, detailed teachings on both of these um, things that I deal with. The one that I just talked about, Joshua, and this um, and the, the curse that he put in the city. I had entitled that Spiritual Ignorance is Dangerous, or, or Excuse of the Law. Um, ignorance of the Law is No Excuse, something like that. But you could go on YouTube and find it. And the next one there, I had on there too. So I did detailed teachings on these, right, guys? But I want to refresh people based on my conversation over the weekend and people, you know, the past can tell, oh, your breakthrough's right here. Your breakthrough is coming. You know, I see a shift. And yeah, those shifts and stuff happening. It's like people who, from the Caribbean, you got your fruit tree, right? You got your mango tree and it, it bring a nice um, harvest of mango. You got your mango season, your tree full of mangoes. You can't wait to eat these mangoes. You're watching them every day to get in nice and full and to get in ripe. And as soon as you decide, okay, it's time for me to pick these mangoes and enjoy them. Either the birds come and eat them out or the little boys around the neighborhood come and clean your tree. You're like, what? That's just what happened with a lot of us. God blessing us, but we're not getting to enjoy our harvest because of these family curses that's here and the enemy has the right to eat our fruit before we get to eat it. It's not that he's not blessing us. He is blessing us. But we're not getting to enjoy the harvest. Because the enemy has the right. Through these open doors. And these curses that's in our family bloodline. And the enemy has the right to eat the fruit. Before we can get to enjoy the harvest. Guys I'm going to leave that there. But since I know this is going on. I'm going to try and do some refresher on some of these things. Because I know a lot of new people listening and open people's eyes to these kind of things. It's not just life. And you don't have to sit back and just deal with these things. There's a lot of stuff that you don't know that's affecting you. Set not on your eyes on the things that are seen. But sometimes it's the things that you're not seeing that's pulling the strings and keeping you back. Have a great day, guys. Have a great day. we we'll talk again on Tuesday. Okay, bye. Maxine Siabra Clark, how are you doing this morning? Hope you're having a great day. Okay, bye.